Hello and happy Capesmas! Today I've taken you to a slightly different corner of my sewing room to talk about how to fit a cape. I've got my mini me mannequin here. Alternatively, if you have a friend to be a body double or you're really confident in pinning things to your own clothes and molding in the mirror, you can do that as well. So before we talk about how to fit a cape, let's talk about what makes a good fitting cape. Now that depends on what type of fit that you want. You may want a cape that drapes off your shoulder perfectly and right down the side. And in order to do that, you would be shaping a very nice, elegant dart. And I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. Or you might want a cape that's very snuggly and cozy that you can wrap all the way around yourself. And both of these are valid, but very different. So we're gonna talk about those real quick. Now to start with, Let's talk about how much fabric you're going to need for your cape. In my how to draft a cape video, I talk about this a little bit more in depth, but we're gonna get into it again. So I have my measuring tape here, and now I'm going to be taking what I like to call a hug measurement. And now that is just gonna be from, ah, that is just gonna be from fingertip to fingertip. And then with your elbows on the edges of the tape, you're gonna wrap it around like this and relax the grip. And you see how it adds some more fabric? And this is roughly what you're gonna want. And I know that from fingertip to fingertip, there's a straight line that is the same as your height, but that's not actually what we're measuring. Because you see, you've got um, soft tissue here in your, in your trunk of your body, especially in the back. You've got soft tissue in the front that when you fold your arms also gets accommodated. So that hug measurement that we're talking about here is actually different from fingertip to fingertip, which would just be a person's height in most cases. But if you're in a pinch and you're making a cape for a friend, taking their height is a good approximation for how wide you want the cape fabric to be. If you're doing the sculpted cape, you don't actually need a full hug measurements worth of fabric. You can skimp a little bit and do about two thirds of it. Now let me show you really quick how to do those nice darts. Here I'm holding the dart for the dusk pattern. This dart is meant to be laid on top of your cape and traced if you are not in the mood to sculpt the dart. And as you can see, if I lay this on here, you can kind of see how it's roughly the length of my shoulder and it curves down my arm just a little bit. Um, this is obviously not a curved dart, this is a standard straight dart, but this takes a little bit of volume out of the fabric, both to make it easier to gather all of the fabric to your neck measurement. Also, it distributes the volume a little bit nicer. But if you wanted to do a fully sculpted, you're going to take your cape body. This one is the dusk cape body with the front panels sewn on already, and I've got my gores inserted. So I'm just gonna take this and I'm going to fold it in half find the true half of it, just like that. And now this half with right sides in is going to get pinned. It's gonna get pinned to the back of the neck right in the middle. Alternatively, if you're doing this on a person, you can safety pin it to their clothing. You can just hold it. There's a lot of ways to finagle it. And this we're gonna lay over there for now. Be a good little peep. And we're gonna take this front part. And now let's say that I want this, like I said, to be open in the front and a nice sculpted shoulder. So I'm gonna lay this in the front, how I'm gonna want it to lay. That's about right, you know? Fold this under for the hem. Approximate what the hem would be. Yeah, so that's the center there. And that's about how I want it to lay. Whoop. Just like that. So I will take my handy dandy dress pin and just pin that right to the neck. And again, if you're doing this on a friend, uh, don't just jab them with a pin. <laughs> you can use a safety pin to pin it to their clothing or alternatively, you can just hold it or have them hold it. There's a lot of ways to finagle this, like I said. Now we have all this extra fabric. What are we gonna do with this? Well, one thing that we can do is dart it. So we're gonna put this here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pinch right up on the neck like this, right? 
and you can kind of see that there's sort of this chunk of fabric that's already like folding off right and you could sew just a straight line there but then you're going to wind up with an awkward lump right here so what we're actually going to do to start with is we're going to pin right here ow and like i said if you were going to do this form of cape you would probably want one that started with less volume than your full hug measurement. And now we're gonna trace this down. And instead of going on a straight line, we're going to, where is my marker? This is a water soluble marker. And now instead of tracing this line straight down like this, we are going to round that out and trace it down a bit more like that. And then what we would do is we would go and we would pin it down like so, so that we could take that over to our machine and sew it down. And then we would wind up with a nice sculpted shoulder and that's why we did this with the wrong side out so we could just take it right to our machine and sew it. it's just nice and easy and ready for us to work with now what i want for this cape in particular is a nice full huggable fluffy cape right so i'm not going to be doing this dart here i'm going to do a different dart i'm actually going to gather it so i still want this hem and this front part to be here but instead of being pulled this way i want it to hang straight down like that right and all of this volume i actually want to distribute a good amount of it to the front so what i can do is i can either take this over to my sewing machine and sew a gathering stitch all the way to here and just gather this to the neck right but while I've got you here and we're talking about like luxury cape fitting, I'm going to actually dart it instead. So I'm gonna do a bunch of little pleats, like so. And I'm going to fold them inward so that when it's right side out, I have these nice little pleats facing outside on my body. As you can see here, I'm just taking it and rolling it and folding it in line and then taking a dress pin and pinning it down and then this way I can look at it and make sure that it's falling exactly how I want it before pinning the pleats in place and taking it over to my sewing machine. And now you can see this excess fabric is starting to diminish a little bit. There's a little bit less excess than there was when we started. Now you could do a little dart right here instead of continuing to pleat all the way around if you wanted to. Um, I, I haven't actually made up my mind yet. I think I will do a little dart actually just right here. And now what I'm doing is I'm just doing two little pleats in the back that'll create a nice layered box pleat. Now I've just got this little bit of fabric left over right here. And so what I'm gonna do with that is I'm gonna pin it here. I, this is kind of a nice little raglan fitting dart. Let me turn this over so you can see a little bit better. Oh, look at all that beautiful fabric. Just right here pinching at the top, smoothing down the bottom, and you want it to be a nice taper, really, because it'll disappear more that way. I'm gonna go in just like, just like this. And that will just fade right into the fabric and disappear. And then we've got this nice gather here and this will be a box pleat from the in, from the outside and then what you would do is just continue on the other side and believe it or not you really can finagle your way without a dress mold you can do this on yourself 
uh, is a little bit more difficult. It'll be a little bit more time consuming, but you can do this on yourself. It is much harder though. Now all I'm doing before I take my fabric off of my dress mold is I'm marking a really clean line in between my pins. This helps you to follow your line if you've never done it before. And then to remove your fabric from the dress mold, go ahead and remove the pins and then reinsert them into just your fabric to pin down your little pleats. And then you can peel it right up. Do be cautious to leave all of your pleats fully intact though. Next, it's time to sew our darts down. You're going to start with a back stitch and then continue on following the line as cleanly as you can. Seam allowance or seam gauges are not what you're paying attention to in the slightest. You are really just following the line with your needle. And once you have that finished up, your seam should look something like this. And then you're going to go ahead and pink your seam and either do a Hong Kong finish or finish it off with a zigzag stitch or just leave it as is. And after ironing those seams flat, you can continue on with basting all of your pleats into place. You do need to baste the pleats after sewing your little shoulder seams because otherwise you're gonna wind up with a tangled mess of fabric. Because the excess fabric that we just pinched off and cut off to make the little darts would wind up getting caught in your basting stitches and Lord knows how that would affect everything else. So I just finished sewing all of my little pleats in and I also went on ahead and I took my hood and I gathered that. And so the next step is to place the hood with the right side facing the right side and distribute my gather. Now, obviously I'm not gonna want to gather right here cause that's gonna be folded into the hem. So I'm just gonna straighten that out and distribute it down that way. And I will just pin all along here. And then I will take my little hoodie hood over to my machine and sew it on. And if you wanna see me talk about how I get my hoods to fit properly, I will show you my little tips and tricks or little additions you can add to your hood in the in the treating yourself video which should be coming out i think two days from this one anyways thanks for coming along with me and happy cape smiths all of the tips and tricks for fitting a cape that i just talked about can be used on a self-drafted cape or any of the patterns that i currently have in my kofi and if you would like to buy me a Kofi, we do still have a goal of earning all of my expenses back for the past year, and that will fund me all the way until next February. Uh, we're getting really down to the wire, and it's really fun because the closer we get to the date, the closer donations are actually coming in. They're kind of neck and neck right toward the finish line, right? Anyways, that's all I've got, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye, friends!